the NFL starts today. I mean, that I mean, I cannot put into words how happy that makes me. The NFL is beginning today, and I thought today would be a great day to sit back and predict the regular season record for my team, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I do consider myself a Yinzer, but I try to be as unbiased as I can. You know, I, I've listened over the past week to all kinds of uh, local Pittsburgh stations trying to get people's opinions about the Steelers. And um, I'm pretty high on the Steelers, but there are some local Pittsburgh radio stations that are like ridiculous with the Steelers. Like I've heard, um, if you're from Pittsburgh, you're familiar with the station 93.7 The Fan. There was a guy on there saying that uh, Pickett was going to be better than Justin Herbert this year, which I think is uh, mind-bogglingly stupid, you know, because Herbert, as much as I like Pickett, Justin Herbert has been like a you know top five quarterback. I don't see Kenny being that good. But um, despite all that, I have the Steelers being pretty good this year, and it's not because I think they're a Super Bowl contending team. I think they're a playoff team. Um, but the number one reason why I have them winning so many games is just the strength of their schedule is not that difficult. Uh, they have a pretty easy schedule, and we're going to go game for game, week by week. This is going to be a very long, free-flowing format, you know, podcast format, uh, where I'm going to be predicting the Steelers' schedule here. So it's going to be a long one. I'm going to try to make this as quick as I can, but if you're familiar with the channel, excuse me, channel, you know I can ramble for for days. Um, So a quick stat I wanted to mention here. Now, if we refer back to, if you saw my uh, playoff prediction videos, um, only five games out of the Steelers' uh, 17 games this year I have uh, are from my projected playoff teams. Only five games are playoff teams this year, in my opinion. Um, now that, that depends on how you feel about the Ravens. I did not have the Ravens make, making the playoffs, and we'll talk about that a little more in depth. Um, but yeah, the only playoff teams that I see us playing are the Niners, the Jags, the Bengals twice, and the Seahawks. Those are the only playoff teams we play this year. Uh, so let's get on into it. So week one, If you saw my uh, power rankings video, you know that I think the Steelers are going to win this game. Now, um, something big happened uh, since I made that video, and that's that Nick Bosa has signed a contract and will play. Uh, That's obviously a massive piece. Um, Nick Bosa being out was a big reason why I thought the Steelers kind of had the advantage in this game, but um, I'm still rolling with the Steelers for a couple of reasons. Number one, the quarterback situation for the Niners is still not great. Even though you're getting Brock Purdy back, He's coming off of a gruesome injury on his throwing arm. Um, So, you know, there's just been too much noise at the quarterback position for the Niners this offseason for me to really... um, I think the Niners, like, I still have them as a playoff team. I still have them winning their division. But I think it's going to take time for them to get back into that dominant form just because... Uh, Purdy's going to, I think, need to play himself back in. And George Kittle isn't, I mean, as of right now, isn't supposed to be playing... um, so yeah, you got all that. Uh, the Steelers are red hot. I try not to take much from preseason games, but the Steelers did go 3-0. and And every time Kenny Pickett played, uh, the drive resulted in a touchdown. And uh, also, I look back, the most impressive of the preseason games was the Bills game because there were two drives Kenny Pickett had where he was playing against the Buffalo Bills defensive starters, which is just filled with pro bowlers. And he carved them up. He literally just carved them up uh, two times. Go back and watch that if you don't believe me. I think Kenny Pickett is on pace for a massive year this year. Um, So all that stuff I just said, um, I think our O-line is vastly improved. I think we are going to be able to beat the Niners. Now, I know this this one's probably the... uh, um, one of the more controversial ones just because the Niners are considered a Super Bowl contender. Um, And we are actually the underdogs in this one. But I just, you know, for everything I said, I have the Steelers winning this. So that puts us at 1-0 and to start the year. We go to week two. We're hosting the Cleveland Browns. Uh, this is an afternoon game, I believe, at 425. Um, I have us beating the Browns. So I think if the Browns are going to beat us this year, it's going to be later on in the season whenever uh, the Deshaun thing. If Deshaun ends up working out in Cleveland, I think it's going to take some time over the season to really establish that because he's still, like, if you go back and look at Deshaun Watson's numbers 
from the last year, the five games or six games, whatever it was he played last year, he was terrible. Like his his quarterback rating was absolutely putrid. Uh, just he was not good last year in those few games that he played. So I don't know exactly what a fair expectation of Deshaun is going into this season. And like I said, I think if the Browns do have success, um, it's going to take time for them to build it up over the season, you know, getting Deshaun just more and more uh, plays within this offense. So I think, and especially it's it's in Pittsburgh too. This game is home for the Steelers. So those things, I have us winning that game. Uh, that puts us at 2-0. Uh, week three, we go to Vegas to play the Raiders. Now, the Raiders could be a sneaky good team to start the year. Um, I think they're going to kind of go sideways as the year goes on just because it's an inevitability that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to get hurt. He's gotten hurt every single season of his career, so I'm not, uh, not going to you know, trust Jimmy G for staying healthy late long term. But this is only week three. So <laughs> for the Raiders' sake, hopefully he's playing. Um, and they could give us an interesting game, honestly. Like the Steelers, they should win this game. They should be favorited to win this game. The Raiders were really bad last year. But obviously that change at quarterback kind of uh, changes things up a little. Um, they have really high-end players. Uh, like Devontae Adams, you can still argue is the best receiver in football. Josh Jacobs just led the league in uh, rushing yards. Um, I really like that tight end they got, Michael Mayer. I think he's going to be really good. And then, you know, you got a couple standouts defensively, of course, Max Crosby. But the thing for me is their secondary is extremely weak. The Steelers have a really good receiving core with Pickens, Johnson, Robinson, Calvin Austin. Uh, so I think the Steelers with Kenny Pickett and this Canada offense that, again, just going off the preseason, I'm trying not to take too much from it, but judging from the preseason, it looked like they were pushing the ball down the field a lot more. If they're able to expose that Raiders secondary, I think they'll be able to win this one. Um, and this one is I'm a little more hesitant on. I'm going to pick the Steelers to win this one, but this does feel like a game that the Steelers would lose because, I don't know, Two or three games every year. It seems like we just play down to competition and end up losing. But um, on paper, we should win this one. That puts us at 3-0 and to start the year. Then we go to Houston to play the Texans. Um, I think the Steelers will absolutely obliterate Houston. Um, Houston is in a complete rebuild. They have a rookie head coach and a rookie quarterback um, and a dreadful roster. So if the Steelers lose this game... Uh, I might have to do something drastic. Like, uh, I don't even know. You'll have to let me know in the comments something bizarre that I can do if <laughs> the Steelers lose that one because uh, I'm going to be ashamed to be a Steelers fan if they lose to Houston. Um, so I've been winning that one, obviously. Uh, that puts us at 4-0 to start the year. That'd be really good if that does end up happening, of course. Then we go week five, back to Pittsburgh to play the Ravens. I do have the Ravens winning this game. I think, okay, opposite of the Browns. I think the Browns are going to beat us in the second game of the year. The Ravens are going to beat us in the first game of the year. Why, why do I say that? Well, the Ravens, they tend to always start the year off really hot. Um, since Lamar Jackson's taken over as quarterback, the Ravens always start off, like the first half of the year, they always look incredible. They always look like they're in Super Bowl contention, and then usually around like week 9, week 10, uh, injuries start to pile up, and they're just not the same team. Um, so, you know, if history tells us that's the, the course of the Ravens, I'm not going to go against history. I'm going to assume that they're going to start off really hot, especially with Lamar Jackson's best receiving core uh, he's ever had. Um, it's going to be a fun game, but I do ultimately believe that the Steelers will lose this one. Uh, the Ravens, they have they potentially can have a very high-powered offense this year. I'm uh, very interested to see because... You know, the big criticism on Lamar was like, oh, well, he's obviously a great runner, but he can't throw very well. Um, but everyone's excuse was, well, he doesn't have a great receiving core. And I've even used that that uh, point in arguments. So there's no, there's really no excuses for Lamar anymore. He has an incredible receiving core. I mean, compared to past receiving cores he's had, this is by far the best one. So I think this will be a fun divisional matchup. I do have Baltimore coming out on top, putting us at 4-1. and one. Uh, week six, we go into the bye. Um, week seven, we go across the country to L.A. to play the Rams. Uh, the Rams are going to be one of the worst teams in the league. So, again, when I talked about easy schedule, um, 
Houston just picked second overall. We play them. Um, now we're playing the Rams, who I think are going to be dreadfully bad. I mean, there was a thing that a vis- um, excuse me, a graphic that came out. The Rams do not have a first round pick on their defense, not named Aaron Donald. That's mind boggling right there. Um, Cooper Cup, I don't even know if he's going to play in this game because he's he's definitely not playing week one, and they said he's uh, likely to miss more time. So there's a good chance Cup might not even be back by week seven. He's dealing with a hamstring injury, which uh, for receivers is the nasty one. That's like the worst injury you can have for a receiver. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if Cup's playing. And you go look at their uh, receiving uh, depth. Uh, it's Van Jefferson, Tutu Atwell, and Ben Skoranek. Those are the receivers outside of Cooper Cup on this team. And it's not even a given that Stafford's going to be healthy by week seven because uh, he's another guy who's extremely injury prone. So I don't even know Stafford's going to be playing in this game. Uh, so the Rams are just an absolute disaster. They're a mess. They're in the Caleb Williams sweepstakes. Steelers should beat them. Puts us at five and one. We come back to Pittsburgh to play Jacksonville. Um, and Jacksonville, I'm very high on them this year. I think they have a shot to challenge for the one seed, just given the um, the difficulty of their schedule is pretty easy. Uh, so I do have Jacksonville beating us. I think this would be like a fun shootout match. Um, but ultimately, I think the Jags, they're going to have one of the most high-powered offenses in the league this year. Uh, so that puts us at 5-2. and two. Uh, We stay in Pittsburgh for Week 9 to play the Tennessee Titans. Um, I'm not very high on the Titans. I have never really been high on the Titans this entire era. You know, the whole Tannehill, Derrick Henry era, I've never really seen the Titans as that great of a team. I feel like they've overachieved because they have a great head coach in Mike Vrabel. Um, But, yeah, I mean, this team has clear flaws. This is probably the worst offensive line Derrick Henry is going to play behind. Um, Their defense, it still boggles me how... Their defense is still able to be productive with basically having like no names outside of Jeffrey Simmons and Kevin Byard. Name a guy on the Tennessee Titans defense. Um, it's it's just like it, I get to give a lot of credit to Vrabel for coaching these guys up, but I just think this is the year where you really start to see a big decline. Um, this is probably Tan Hill's last year as a starter in the NFL, uh, so I don't expect big things from him. Um, Hopkins could be interesting here, but. You have to keep in mind that Tennessee is where receivers go to end their career. I mean, you look at um, Randy Moss ended up with the Titans. He was obviously didn't work out there. Julio Jones was with the Titans a couple years ago. That was an unmitigated disaster. Um, and then, of course, now you have D-Hop, who I, I'm a really big fan of D-Hop, but I just don't know what's like a fair expectation of DeAndre Hopkins going into this year. Like, I was really high on Julio when he went to Tennessee, that didn't work out, and you had a way better team back then. So I don't know what, what to make of Tennessee. I'm going to say the Steelers beat them. It's a home game. That puts us at 6-2. and two. Uh, Week 10, we host the Green Bay Packers. Uh, we should beat the Packers. Um, I like the Packers' uh, defense. It's, it's very stable. Um, their o line's still pretty good. Jordan Love should be a pretty decent quarterback. I don't think he's going to like make the highlight reels. Kind of reminds me more of that Jared Goff mold where like you put stuff around him, he's going to be productive, but he's not really going to make the highlight reels. Um, so, yeah, and especially like this is one that could go one of two ways because obviously we know so little about Jordan Love. Uh, he could be really good or he could be really bad, and by this point in the year um, – it could be a disaster on Green Bay. We just know we know so little about love. Um, so I'm going to say Steelers win this. It's in Pittsburgh. Um, our defense against a rookie. I mean, essentially Jordan Love's a rookie quarterback still. This is his first year as a full-time starter. I'm going to call Jordan Love a rookie. Our defense against a rookie quarterback should be able to give him all kinds of problems. That puts us at 7-2. and two. Week 11, we have uh, – we're going to Cleveland to play the Browns. And like I said – I have the Browns winning this one. I think this is whenever the Browns are still going to – they're going to start to th- figure things out. Uh, you have Stefanski on the hot seat. We know that Stefanski can coach. Uh, he won Coach of the Year his first year in Cleveland. Um, so, like I said, best-case scenario for the Browns is if they're going to figure it out, it's going to happen later on in the season. Like week by week, they're just going to build up, build up Deshaun's you know, comfort in this offense. 
They still have a top-tier offensive line. They still have Nick Chubb. Amari Cooper is one of the more underrated receivers. They have star names on their defense. It's a good roster. It's just underachieved due to poor management. So um, I do have the Browns beating us in Week 11, putting us at 7-3. and three. Then we go in Week 12 to play the Bengals, and I think we're going to get smoked by the Bengals. I mean, that like last year... We obviously beat them week one. That was one of the flukiest games ever. I mean, it was fun. It was a blast to watch that game. But, I mean, Minka and TJ Watt probably both had, like, the best games of their career. It took that for us to win that game in overtime. Um, we The next time we played them last year, they crushed us. And I think that's going to be more so of what happens this year. Especially, like, it's rough that we play the Bengals uh, both times at the latter part of the year. Because the Bengals... Their thing is, like, they usually get off to a slow start, but by the end of the year, they are red hot, especially going into playoffs. They're on fire. So it kind of sucks that we had to play them both times towards the end of the season. Uh, I think we're going to get absolutely obliterated by the Bengals in Week 12, uh, especially since it's in Cincinnati. Uh, that puts us at 7-4. and four. Then we uh, come back to Pittsburgh, and we play the Cardinals, arguably the worst roster in the NFL. So that's another dumpster fire team that we play. Again, when I said at the beginning of the video, we have a pretty easy schedule. Any any team that gets to play the Cardinals this year is obviously loving that because the Cardinals are like actively tanking to be the, the number one overall pick. So we should win that one. Again, similar to what I said about Houston. If something like if we lose this game against the Cardinals, I will do something very drastic. Um, just if we lose this game, I'm going to be very ashamed to be a Steelers fan. Um, so yeah, I have us winning that game. It puts us at eight and four week 14. We stay in Pittsburgh to play the new England Patriots. This is Juju's return to Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, I think we're going to beat the, the Patriots. Um, the Patriots can only really win in one way and that's low scoring and just like ball management, running the ball. Um, they did beat us last year. We played them. In New England, I think that was what week two or week three. That was rough. I mean, <laughs> that was the rough times last year. The start of last year, uh, wow, that was bad. Because uh, then the, the next week was week three. We played the Jets. I think that was Kenny's debut, and he threw like three picks. So that was not the the most fun time to be a Steelers fan last year. But this year we should be able to beat New England just because I think our offense is going to be much more improved. Um, but it, it, it'll probably be a close game. I'm not saying we're going to blow them out, but their offense is just too one-dimensional for me to really consider them uh, a threat to us. So 9-4. and four. Week 15, we go to Indianapolis to play the Colts. Uh, we should smoke the Colts. Similar to the Texans, they have a rookie head coach and a rookie quarterback. We should destroy the Colts. And their O-line's banged up. They don't really have any skill position receivers outside of Pittman. We don't even know if Jonathan Taylor's playing this year. Um, yeah, we should beat the Colts 10-4. Uh, and four. Week 16, we host the Bengals. So, again, like I said earlier about the Bengals, it's unfortunate that we play them both times at the end of the season because they're always red hot to end off the year. So I do have the Bengals sweeping us for this year. Uh, puts us at 10 and 5. Then we we fly across the country to Seattle to play the Seahawks. And I do have us losing this game. The reason why I have us losing this game is because we play our arch rival Baltimore the next year, or excuse me, the next week. Um, and this this always happens at least one time in a Steeler season is we overlook a team. You know, like we're looking forward to the week after. So we kind of just like dismiss the team we're playing. And I think that's going to happen with Seattle. And Seattle has a really good roster. They've had back-to-back -back incredible drafts. I mean, they're really putting a, something special together there, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I think two to three years from now, they're going to have probably the best secondary in football with those two corners. Um, they need to develop their pass rush a little more. But, yeah, they're, they're really building something nice. And then offensively, Geno Smith just had a phenomenal year. Um, their receiving core is incredible, especially after getting Jackson Smith and Jigba. Um, yeah, like their roster alone is really good. Um, they're going to be a playoff team, in my opinion. It's in Seattle, and we play Baltimore the next week. I, this just feels like a game we're going to overlook and, and get beat. Um, that puts us at 10-6. and six. Then the last game of the year, Week 18, we go to Baltimore. And I think we're going to beat Baltimore in Week 18 because, like I said earlier, 
I think Baltimore will beat us early, and then by the end of the year is usually when their injuries start to accumulate, especially Lamar. I'd be shocked if OBJ plays the entire season. Like, I would... That would be like a miracle, I think, for Baltimore if OBJ doesn't get hurt. I think that's kind of an inevitability. Um, And same thing with Lamar. Like, the past two seasons... He hasn't really played the second half of the year, so I don't. I think it's a little unrealistic to think Lamar is going to play all the games. Um, so I do have us beating them. That means a final record of eleven and six. And that's I, in my opinion, that's good enough to make the playoffs. Now, the AFC is obviously loaded, so I don't know what seed that would put us as a wild card. I don't think we're winning the division with eleven and six. I could see Cincy winning like thirteen games. Um, so. I do have us as a wild card team. I don't know exactly what seed that would be, whether it's five, six, or seven. I don't know, but that has been my uh, predictions for the Steelers schedule week by week. Um, go ahead and let me know what you thought, and uh, go ahead if you made if you uh, made it this far in the video. I uh, really appreciate it. Go ahead and leave a like, comment, and subscribe.